Who is the prophet like unto Moses in Devarim, in the Torah, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 19? Now, if you ask a Christian or a Messianic or a Muslim, you will get an answer, and I'm sure you know who they will say it is. And I'm not here to argue whether or not they are or aren't. You are going to get the Jewish Israelite understanding for 3,000 plus years from the Torah, from the Hebrew scriptures as a whole, who this is speaking about, why we believe so, based on the clear contextual proof within our Hebrew Bible. And then you can decide for yourself whether or not this makes sense or not. Let us begin. Who is it then, if it's not who the Christians, Messianics, and the Muslims are claiming it is, according to our understanding? Let us answer. In Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 19, it refers to Yehoshua, Joshua, in the immediate context, and then all subsequent prophets after him. That's the answer. Let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. Moses is speaking. This is very important that you understand. So here's Moses speaking. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. Pay attention to the emphasis I put. Like me from among you, from your countrymen. He's speaking to Israel. You shall listen to him. Okay, so now we need to establish the context of what it means to be like Moses. Verse 18 establishes this context. Let's look at verse 18. Now, God is speaking. God says, I will raise up a prophet from among their countrymen like you. Who is he referring to? Moses. Like you. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. So what does it mean to be like Moses in this context? It's simple. All that it means is that the prophet will speak the words that God commands him. That's it. Now, what prophet do we know in the Tanakh, in the Hebrew Bible, who fits this description? Every prophet in the Tanakh, in the Hebrew Scriptures, speaks the words of God. That's the definition of a prophet. So who does this apply to? All prophets. But in the immediate context, it applies to Yehoshua, Joshua. Since he was Moses' successor, the book of Joshua gives us explicit proof of this. Let's take a look. Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. No man shall stand up before you all the days of your life. This is referring to Joshua. As I was with Moses, God is speaking here. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. I will not weaken my grasp on you, nor will I abandon you. Joshua chapter 1 verse 16. And they answered, meaning Israel, answered Joshua saying, listen carefully, all that you have commanded us, we shall do, and wherever you send us, we shall go. You see this a lot in the Torah itself when the Israelites are answering Moses. Same message. And then the next verse, verse 17 of chapter 1 of Joshua. Just as we obeyed Moses, right? I just made a claim. Is it based on the scripture? Here it is, verse 17. Israel is speaking to Joshua. Just as we obeyed Moses in everything, so shall we obey you. Only that the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. You see? Very, very clear. This is not abstract. We are not making things up. And as we go further, you will see it very, very clearly. Joshua chapter 3, verse 7. And the Lord said unto Yehoshua, Joshua, This day I will begin to make you great in the sight of all of Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Very, very clear. Joshua chapter 4 verse 14. On that day, the Lord made Joshua great in the sight of all of Israel, and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. Joshua chapter 11 verse 15. As the Lord commanded Moses his servant, so did Moses command Joshua, and so did Joshua. He left 
nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. Nothing was left undone. Okay? I would argue that there is no prophet in the entire Tanakh, Hebrew Bible, who is compared to Moses as much as Joshua. If you can show me otherwise, you the viewer, I'm willing to listen. Now, you bring up Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 10. This comes up a lot. It says, and they initially argue, those who bring this up, they argue that Joshua could not be a prophet like Moses, mentioned in Deuteronomy 18, verse 18. Why? Because it says this, okay? It says, and there was no other prophet who arose in Israel like Moses, listen carefully, whom Yehoah knew face to face, that the Lord knew face to face. Well, we look at passages like Exodus chapter 33, verse 11, which proves and highlights the fact that Moses, apart from all other prophets, had a very unique relationship with God himself that no other prophet had. Not even close. His ability to speak to God in a very, very personal level. We see this example in Exodus chapter 33, verse 11. Then the Lord would speak to Moses face to face. Very, very clear, face to face. It's different than all other prophets who heard the voice of God, were given prophecy from God. Moses had a very, very, very intimate relationship with Elohim, with God, where he was able to communicate with God and speak with him. Words. Remember, this is the context of Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 10. The context of being like Moses is that no prophet like Moses, was able to speak to God face to face for this context. I would agree that Joshua and all other prophets are not like Moses in that context, the context I just mentioned, face to face, in the context of Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 10. But Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, does not speak concerning this context. For to be like Moses in this context of Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, is simply to speak the words that God puts in their mouths. Joshua and all other true prophets certainly are like Moses in this sense of having the words of God upon their mouths. Thus, they are being spoken of in the context of Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. Them, not Moses but they, the ones that came after Moses, Joshua, and the other prophets of blessed memory. We can also use grammatical consistency to demonstrate that Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, does not refer to only one prophet, but rather the general concept of prophets who came after Moses. Let's look at the verses again, carefully. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 17, it says, And the Lord said to me, They have done well in what they have spoken. Verse 18, I will set up a prophet for them from among their brothers like you, and I will put my words into his mouth, and he will speak to them all that I command him. Verse 19, and it will be that whoever does not hearken to my words that he speaks in my name, I will hold them responsible of it. These verses describe the prophet like Moses. So in conclusion, the prophet like Moses was very, very clearly Joshua, Yehoshua. So the context of Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, shows that Joshua and all prophets that came after him, from Joshua to Malachi, were the prophets like Moses. And Joshua fit the description like Moses better than any of the prophets after him. Now, the other context of the other passages, which they use, Christians and Messianics and others, to push the context, well, it cannot be Joshua because Moses was unique. And that's the point. Yes, that context is different. Moses was unique, different from Joshua and all other prophets to come because he had a relationship unlike any of them ever had. Face to face, he had a speaking relationship with God that they never had. They had prophecies through dreams, through experiences, but never on the level of Moshe, our great teacher of blessed memory. The final verse that I will quote is very, very critical for this video presentation and the argument that I'm making on our behalf and our understanding. In Shemot, in Exodus chapter 19, verse 9, 
We have the origins of why Israel, the faith of Israel, Judaism, is not a religion, it's a reality. But also, the point being made in this one verse concludes this whole argument. It says there, God says to Moses, I will come to you, Moses, in a thick cloud, so that all the people, all the people, will hear as I speak with you. And the final words, and then they shall believe in you forever. Now it should say there, until Jesus or Yeshua come, or until the final prophet comes, who will have a new book. It doesn't say that. They will believe in you forever, le'olam in Hebrew. So that is the conclusion of the matter. 